Coming off the heels of the Illinois loss Friday, a lot of Nebraska fans are asking a bunch of questions. Uh, what went wrong? Uh, what are the things that need to improve going forward? Is this fixable? Is this something that is going to rear its head throughout this season? I'm going to go over a quick summary of what I feel went wrong in this game. I have watched the tape, the full film of Illinois' defense or Nebraska's defense versus Illinois' offense. And I'm going to give some perspective. Tomorrow, I'll probably be posting a full film review and or going over it on the live stream. Um, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you're new here. Uh, drop a like. Let me know what you think. If you like this stuff, and I'll continue to drop film reviews as well. So uh, yeah, just stay tuned. But I'm going to get into uh, some of the things that Nebraska did poorly and some of the things that Illinois did well to force Nebraska into situations. <laughs> and I can tell you first things first that you know Illinois did a lot of things that were simple, not too complex. And what Nebraska's defense did wrong is fixable. It is fixable. What surprised me most was the lack of discipline um, in the missed assignments. And that's not something we're totally used to seeing from a, you know, Tony White led defense. And so just going through a couple of the things that that stood out to me the most. Um, you know, what Illinois did with their game plan was they used a lot of motions, right? And they did a lot of sneaky stuff, uh, moving 85 across the formation a bunch, uh, motioning out into little, you know, uh, flat routes, you know, rotating, throwing little wheel routes out, trying to take advantage of, of certain coverages, um, trying to take advantage of the middle of the field, trying to bring the defenders down into the box and really use their eyes against them, and then try to beat them over the top. So what we saw, you know, was a lot of um, inside zone, you know, RPOs, quick hitting stuff by Luke Altmaier. Uh, coming out of that first drive, I think they had four passes to two runs. And a lot of what they ran throughout the day was out routes, quick hitches, and just, you know, little digs, um, finding soft spot in the zone sitting out over the middle of the field. And just finding the voids in Nebraska's defense. Now, what caused some of that was, you know, the the quick routes to the outside kind of opened up a little bit of that middle uh, for the run game. And as we saw early, Nebraska was doing a good job of defending the run game. As the game went on, Nebraska's defense got stretched a little thin, and it started to really the game plan started to really take its toll. Um, we saw that they snuck a couple guys out in the end zone, you know, those couple plays. And again, I'm going to dive fully into those on my film breakdown, but what that did was it really caused Nebraska's eyes to get lost. And in the three, three, five, one of the biggest things that you have to do is you have to maintain your eyes on the football. Um, there's a lot of man coverage. Again, there's a lot of one-on-ones you really have to, you know, be aware because when you take away that extra, you know, lineman, that defensive lineman, and you place him with a defensive back, of course you're losing that size. It leaves you susceptible to the edges, but it also leaves you with smaller defenders against a big offensive line, a big and physical offensive line. <clears throat> and so whenever Nebraska was in those situations, um, you know, they would have to bring stunts to stop the run. And sometimes when they bring stunts, then that defender would be out of place and Altmaier would throw a quick hitting route over the top of them and or you know the the defenders would get drawn down to the box John Bullock the linebackers they would come down to the box and then they would have to drop back into coverage but they drop it a little bit over their head then that caused the linebackers to have to get on their heels a little bit and then that opened up the run game and you can see how those play off each other again also you know on these outside little out routes these hitches those type of deals you know, what those did was those opened up the middle of the field and stretched the defense a little wider out because then you have to, you know, have your edge rushers or your linebackers just kind of almost as a safety valve. You know, they can't really step up and stop the run if they're also worried about a route coming over the top and, and getting picked off over the over the back of them. So, um, again, just a really good game plan. It seemed like Bielema had Nebraska schemed up the way he wanted he didn't deviate from the game plan they knew wanted they knew what they wanted to do from the second that they came into this game and they didn't deviate from that and over time it eventually took its toll on the defense their blocking did a great job of really kind of sealing out what they needed to when they needed to they really did a good job of, of creating big holes late in the game especially 
Um, and they, they, you know, they took away what some of Nebraska's individual players do well. There was times where, you know, a lot of times Nash would get doubled. When Nash would get doubled, he's not able to create, you know, wreak that havoc in the middle of the line. Then the edges get around, and then that left little openings for, you know, the run game to sneak around for Altmaier sneak out. They had a good blocking scheme as well, but the motions, you know, the the motions all around, and it's going to show up all over film where you see kind of even on that touchdown where 85 sneaks out, right? They ran a play very similar to that two plays prior, but it was it wasn't completed, right? But they ran three very similar plays in a four or five play stretch that led up to the touchdown that were all very similar to the touchdown, but they were they were different in a couple of ways. The incomplete one was almost identical to the one in the touchdown. But when they brought 85 across, again, they tried to sneak him out, but it was covered that time. They went down a little bit further and they ran that play again, but they threw it to somebody else. And then in the ends or on that touchdown, they ran it, snuck 85 out. And basically at that point, all of the defenders came down. Um, Bullock actually kind of put a body to him to check him. Bullock saw that he was coming out. He thought he had help over the top. Bullock got out of the flat. And then um, I'm not sure if it was Singleton over the top that should have stayed back. But again, those guys came down. And then on that second one, um, late in the game to 94, or I think it was 94 that that the big lineman, um, you know, he snuck out in the flat. And there was six, I counted six defenders on the backside view. There were six defenders chasing him. And none of those defenders recognized that he was going on a route. He snuck out behind him again, just a well-designed play, but took advantage of the eyes. You know, Altmeyer was moving the pocket, which he did on occasion. It was just really tempo rhythm, right? And they would come out and they would start with a couple passes or they'd start with a run. And then that would facilitate how the rest of their drive was going to go. Um, again, on that first drive, they came out with a few passes and four passes, two runs, marched down the field, scored really quickly. And then they just kind of built off of that. And then later in the second half, they started doing a little bit more of the run game, but not only did they do it to the inside, they were stretching it to the outside again, keeping that box a little bit spread out. So that way, whenever they did need to invest in the run, they couldn't, um, Nebraska couldn't stack the box and they couldn't get as, uh, as predictable with their stunts. And that's what that's what really caused the issue. And, and again, it's it's a lot of eye discipline. It's a lot of missed ass assignments, and it's a lot of fixable stuff. Now, going at overtime, the long run there on the play, um, that first play of overtime, Nash likes to when he's on the edge and there's an inside zone, or even just like a, a zone read type of look, fake inside handoff, whatever. He really likes to take the inside shoulder of that tackle and he likes to just drive straight through the inside shoulder squeeze through and be able to just use explosive distance speed to be able to blow that play up now what happened was the linebacker went inside and nash you know 85 motion across and nash went to cut off the inside shoulder of 85 well 85 had his feet moving and and his first step was in almost like he was anticipating that move inside and then what that did is allow the running back to bounce outside um, I believe it was Singleton. Again, I'll have to go back um, as I watch the film, uh, or I, when I when I go over the film, I'll be able to tell you specifically. But I believe it was, um, I think it might have been uh, Singleton who slipped on that play. So he slipped when he was breaking forward, and that caused him to take a bad route outside to be able to get back on that play. And then Gifford had to come across and uh, make a play with him. So a lot of things went wrong on that play, and then of course, you know, the touchdown happened. So. Everything that I saw defensively, and again, the offensive side of the ball, everything went, you know, the the reason I'm focused on the defense side of the ball is I think that's where we're having the most question marks just in terms of this game. And there were things in the Northern Iowa game that I saw that led me to believe that potentially with a quarterback with a better arm, a more physical team, that these problems could arise. And of course they did. Now, there are is a benefit to Nebraska schedule coming up, you know, Purdue coming up, you, you get a team that's not as physical, not very good. And, you know, Rutgers is the next big kind of physical, super physical test that we're going to face with a, the big run game. So you got time to kind of correct it. But, you know, some of the players, John Bullock, he was incredible. He was incredible. Bullock did, you know, have a couple of missed assignments, but he is a step or two away from where he needs to be 
even in those missed assignments. And again, a lot of strain is being put on these linebackers. Whenever the uh, pass rush isn't getting home and whenever the game plan is really kind of keeping them honest, right? Keeping them on their heels. They, they can't really attack the way they want to as aggressive and physical as they want because they're worried about getting beat over their shoulders. But then they also can't sit back in coverage because then when they bring that inside run game, they're late getting down. And Illinois did a good job of, of blocking up front. And so it required that second level to be able to come down and make the stop uh, multiple times. So I, again, I have about, uh, I have a long film review coming for you tomorrow and, or again, I'm going to do it in the live stream. So if you would like to see some of the specifics that I'm talking about, um, make sure that you subscribe, like the video, um, stay tuned for that because I'm excited to bring this to y'all because I think what you're going to see from it will give you a, a lot of, hopefully an understanding of what we saw. So you can also see that it's fixable. It's not a talent thing. We're out coached. We were out schemed. And again, Illinois didn't deviate from their game plan and Nebraska didn't make the necessary adjustments. Illinois did a good job as they went along of evolving that game plan, right? They, they invested early, like a boxing reference here. You invest in the body early and then that'll get at the gas tank. And then you can unload your plethora of weapons, right? Get them tired and unload you know, your plethora of weapons, just attack that body early. You're not going to knock them out necessarily. It's, it's hard. You know, you gotta, you gotta hit a right punch and a right spot to really shut that body down and be able to knock somebody out with a body shot. But investing in the body early means you're, you're hitting them there. It's messing up their breathing. They're also, it's messing up their cardio. So then that opens up opportunities later in the game. And that's what Illinois did. They invested in these things. They ran these schemes, even when they didn't work early, and then they kind of built off of those and expanded on those late. And then that was ultimately the death knoll for Nebraska and also why the adjustments couldn't be made. Again, they showed some stuff in the second half that they didn't in the first, but it was completely played off of what they did in the first half. So this was, a, again, a, a well-executed game plan, a well-schemed up game plan by Bielema. Take nothing away from them. That is a well-coached physical team. And Nebraska needed it. Like it's not that they need a loss, but Nebraska, this lot of stuff is going to show up on film for them to correct going forward. So, you know, this is one of those things where if you trust the staff, you trust the players to get it right, then they're going to go in there. They're going to go in the film room. They're going to watch the same stuff I did. They're going to see the same stuff I did, and we'll see if they can correct it. If they don't correct it, then you can panic. But the the thing right now is we trust the staff. We trust Tony White. We've trusted him his whole time. One loss doesn't change that, right? And so let's trust the staff to be able to go in there and get it right, figure this out, scheme it up, you know, and, and kind of get these players a little bit more disciplined with their eyes. And, and you know, who knows what led to that? Again, the defense was very uncharacteristic to what I've seen in the film the first few games. So a lot of that has to do with Illinois again, though. Uh, this is not all on Nebraska negatively. Not a lot of things have changed for Nebraska in terms of how we feel about them. But this defense needs to step it up. And the defense really, and they again, they have every opportunity to do that. We trust this defense. We trust the players on this defense to get it right. We trust the coaches to get it right. And I think we'll see an improvement going forward. So, um, but yeah, again, decided to bring that to y'all tomorrow. So y'all stay tuned for that. Um, and yeah, with that being said, I have I have a couple of uh, other you know videos coming for you from the offensive side of the ball later this week. So, yeah, really excited to bring you what I have uh, to offer this week and get y'all ready for the uh, Purdue game this coming weekend and hopefully get Nebraska back in a win column. Nebraska is a opened as, I believe, a nine and a half point favorite, 10 point favorite, um, and it quickly expanded to 11 and a half. So a get right game in store. Um, but, yeah, curious to see Nebraska when they go up against the physical team. Again, I think Rutgers might be our next most physical test. That should tell us. For sure, the adjustments we've made and how well that looks and bodes well for us going into the end of the season, right? Everything that Nebraska wants is still in front of them. Let's not lose sight of that. We're four weeks into the season. We would rather have these lumps early than late. Again, building momentum over the course of the season is what this team wants to do. And I'm going to be honest, a lot of it was picking our defensive backs. A lot of it was picking our defensive backs. Uh, Tommy Hill, plantar fasciitis, Bly Hill out. So. Again, the quick hitting routes, stuff like that was was a lot to do with just kind of taking 
care of business and, and, and running our corners um, ragged and, and trying to beat them with quick hitting stuff because, you know, the depth wasn't there. So, uh, but yeah, that'll do it for me here. Again, just a quick kind of overview of what I thought. I'll go more detail tomorrow. So y'all come by the stream, 6 p.m. Central, um, and we'll go over everything there. You can ask your questions and uh, we'll, we'll uh, dive into the entirety of the game. So um, with that being said, I'll see you on the next video. Peace.